welcome to another OP06 deck guide. Today we will be talking about Karakuri. And before we start, just a quick reminder, if you guys are also interested in a Perona guide, I have done that as well and you guys can find this video uh, in the description. So let's get started. We are uh, talking about Karakuri. Everybody knows this effect. If you attach a Dawn to him, you can look at either your life or at your opponent's life, check it out and then um, leave it at the top or at the bottom. Also, he gets a thousand power with this. Pretty strong. So, let's get right into it. We are mostly playing the Big Mom Parrots because it just fits and it feels right. This is also why you need Pudding as a 4 off. You want to search pretty much anything you hit. 10 cost Big Mom or 8 cost Katakuri in this particular build is included. Whatever you need, um, just grab it and go on. There is nothing much to say about Pudding. Same as Peros Pero. This is one of your dream cards to play on Dawn Free. You play him, swing next turn and then either decide do you want to keep him, do you want to let him die. He is a big threat on Dawn Free because he can swing, ne swing next turn, you could protect him and his uh, trigger or basically his KO uh, is really helpful to get going in the mid or late game. The first card you could cut to like three or maybe even two if you really want to is the Tankost Big Mom. I see that a lot of people even in the competitive scene have um, decided to not play her as a four off instead um, putting a bit more focus on the seven cost Big Mom and I see why the psychological warfare on this one is insane and you have some good plays you can do on Dawn 7 or Dawn 8. So this 7 cost Big Mom is a big threat. Your opponent most likely will give you the life if he is not secure enough to trash one of his own. Um, either way, with 7 Dawn, this is one of the best cards you could play. One of the best plays you could make at 7 Dawn. So I would put this card at a minimum of two. If you guys want to play her like three or four off, just go ahead and change things up. And for this particular build, I have decided to still include two copies of the eight cost Karakuri because we will be playing the new um, Wano Kuni or um, Straw Hat type cards from OP06. So I'm talking about Onami, Kikunoju and Hiyori. I will be getting to these three ladies a bit later, but um, Karakuri just works with them. Um, you really want to have his on play effect so that you can first of all gain a life and also um, gaining the effect from your trigger from whichever card you have chosen to put on top of, of your life. So he is him. He will be working in this deck, he will be doing great stuff and he is still a big threat on the field once you play him. There is really nothing much to say about badge. If you're playing yellow, you are playing badge as a 4 off. This card can win you games. This card is also most likely the reason you lost the game. Um, you play yellow, you play badge. It's as simple as that. Charlotte Amande is our um, another uh, 2k counter. You could play her, but there is almost no scenario where I would actually play her. She is 99.9% .9 of the time my 2k counter. She is also a hit from um, Pudding, so this is nice. Also, if we are talking about important cards you have to play, when you play yellow, there has to be Gedatsu. Gedatsu is one of the most important uh, cards that yellow has seen in the last few sets um, because he is a 5 cost 6k body, he has a 1k counter and his on play effect is something yellow always needed. It's a simple KO one of your opponent's characters with a cost equal or less than their life. So basically if you put him at 5 dawn or in dawn 5 let's say you will most likely 
um, hit something important from your enemy um, you really should not play anything less than four or maybe three because his uh, KO effect is that important. We are still playing Satori because you can actually play her at five. It's not that bad if you really don't have anything better or want to save something for the next turn. This is uh, totally okay to do so, but most of the time you want to play her from the trigger or just discard her when you are, uh, when you are in need of a 2k counter. So the, this is basically it for Satori. We are now getting to the OP 6 cards. Um, I have fallen in love with them. They are just that good. You really need them. I cannot imagine playing without them. The first card is Onami. She is what I think some sort of overtuned. If you look at her, she is a two cost with 3000 attack and a 1k counter. Her on play effect is give up to one of your leaders or characters banish. And her trigger is to KO one of your opponents 5 cost or lower characters. This card brings so much value on your field, even in your life, because you can now manipulate it with Hiyori. I will be talking about that a bit later. Onami has so much value, not only from her own play, also being on the field. You have so much combo potential. I will be um, talking about that also as well, but just a quick example. If you play her on, let's say, Dawn 6, you um, choose to give one of your leaders, or your leader or one of your characters, banish, attach some Dawn, you will be making a lot of pressure with the simple play because banish is something your opponent really doesn't want to deal with so he will most likely counter out of it so that he can um, protect his life card but if he can't he will lose he won't be losing his hand cards but he will be losing something potentially even more valuable because you just banished it it is that strong and Let's say if you play her on Dawn 6, do something with the remaining Dawn, you can on the next turn play Karakuri, get her on top of your life and make use of her opponent of, of her KO effect to KO a 5 cost of your opponent's characters. This is insane. It is really insane. I mean, it is pretty obvious, but what can your opponent actually do against it? He can, mo he can at most sacrifice his lowest value character with it, but most of the time something is going to die because he has to attack you if he wants to win. So you could also just play Hiyori and put something from the top of your life in your hand and play Onami on top of it so that you can just um think of the next turn where something would actually attack you directly and you simply take the life use the trigger ko it or set up the next um, enemy character to be ko'd it is that good i have just talked about hiyori she's insane not that she can only put uh, one card from your hand into the top or bottom of your life pile she can also be used as a 2k counter this is truly insane if you draw her in the late game all good you don't really need the effect if you if you really must if you really have to do something speci uh, specific to do a certain play go for it but if she's a dead hand in your hand she will never be just a, just a normal 2k counter insane truly insane and to complete the new OP06 waifu trio, let's say, um, we have Kiku Nojo. This card is also really, really good. You want to play her as a 4 off. She is a 4 cost 6000 body. On KO, if your opponent's life is 3 or less, place the top card of your deck to the top of your life. This is insane because most of the time you will be facing, let's say, um, of dual color leaders so they will most likely be four life 
it so you will be seeing a lot of four life decks or even five life decks if they are playing something older for example like karakuri he will still be big in meta but you are quick at taking one or two lives of your enemy and this is where kiku nojo is being aggressive is being a big threat and your opponent has to deal somehow with her the most efficient way nowadays to deal with her is to either get rid of her if your opponent has three uh, more than three lives or to use some of the new opio 6 black cards like uh, brook where he actually does not ko kikunojo he simply puts her into the trash this is something you want to be um, aware of um, if you know that you're playing against let's say peruna or moria they will most likely be playing brook at least one or two copies of him and on don six this could potentially be happening to you so just be on the aware of that and um, have an eye out for Brook. All right, let's go to our another big mom. Uh, as I said, I only play her as a two off because I am not really interested in playing her late game because there will be some scenarios where your opponent doesn't even have a life. So he can simply choose to trash one and work around her uh, uh, on play effect which can be quite frustrating and in the late game it's not that worth of an 8000 body if you know what i'm saying so i only want to play her on curve or maybe next turn so most of the times i will be playing her once at maximum twice this is how much i need her if i do not see her in hand it's not that big of a deal i have a lot of more pressure with the new cards and I can simply work my way around the situation I'm currently in. Also a strong card from the last set, um, the 200 million volt Amaru. This card is for the main effect purposely simply a, a down plus one where you could spend two dawn and get 3000 power if you need it to like finish but if you have one uh, card or less in your life pile you can also rest an opponent for cause this could be uh, useful to block something like Bosalino or sanji this is why i put this card only at two i know the trigger is insane if you find this card at the bottom of your life you will be gaining another card but there are more triggers we want to see i want to see let's say and also there is another event card which changed my mind about amuru where i had them at three and three but now i have chosen to go uh, amaru only as a two off and include the next card which is reject as a four off and I don't think that at the time this video will be releasing we will be having um, an European ban list you know uh, this card is banned in Asia um, not right now but it will be banned I think after the 1st of April and as soon as this card is not banned in Europe I will be playing this as a 4 off this card is more than broken and i understand why this card is banned in asia because let's just look at uh, the effect of this card you can either choose to ko one of your opponents five cost or lower characters this is insane either on curve or in late game straight up ko something this is a yellow event card but not that this was enough you can also choose to deal one damage to your opponent if he has just one life left you also have to take your card into your hand but this is this is so much pressure if your opponent has one card remaining simply trash it or deal one damage to them let's say and he has no life left if you do this at dawn 10 you have six dawn um, available to finish your opponent 
no matter what is on your field, no matter what else you're gonna play, this is strong. This is really, really strong. And it puts your opponent in such a bad position. He always has to think of reject when he has that one life and he is done with his turn. The next step should always be, damn, I think my opponent is going to play reject and I'm going to be facing lethal actions from his characters. This is almost every time going to be the case if you're playing against yellow. They will be leaving you at one life most of the time, rejecting it or KOing your five cost characters. Most of the times those will be your big blockers and you will not be having any fun. So beware of this card, keep an eye out and just try to work your way around it. And if this wouldn't be enough, the trigger is to draw a card most of the time I would not play this trigger only if I'm so far ahead that I don't even have something to KO with the first effect then it would be truly a dead card but those are some insane scenarios where I would not be making use of reject and it being a dead card in my hand so your opponent really has to do nothing the first five turns to for this card to be dead in hand it is that good so this is it basically guys if you want to change something up as i said you can always cut out the big big mom you can add another uh, seven cost big mom or two seven cost big mom um, there are some things that op06 has also um, released which are strong one of the new characters you could be using is Nekomamushi. With uh, two dawns he can attack active characters which makes him a 7k attacker, an active uh, attacker let's say. This can put your opponent in an unpleasant situation where he has to really think about to actually protect something that is active from an attack. This does not happen that often but Nekomamushi is doing his job. And this is something you could consider playing so with that being said you guys I hope you enjoyed this video I hope you guys um, took something from it and I personally will be maining this deck how I showed you here and I am really looking forward to play at my uh, local tournaments and be having fun with Karakuri and I hope you guys do as well so if you like this video please leave a like subscribe and also comment I, I will be happily reading them and answering them